So sometimes people come in here to the Carolina Insider podcast and we don't know as much about them when they first come in. Right. But then when they walk out, we're like, I like that person and I'm going to pay attention to that. We're person. best friends. <laughs> That's actually what we say. Yeah. I'm going to pay attention and see what happens. Such was the case with Aranza Vasquez because she came in, obviously very highly accomplished Olympian. At the time we talked to her, she was a two-time national champion and basically wins all the time. Like, let's let's see what happens to her. Let's keep up with her. She just went out and won two more national yeah. championships and basically wins all the time. Yep. So there's no recourse once that happens but to come back into the podcast. Yep. So congratulations on two more national championships. <laughs> Thank and you. And a great season. And then you've got a lot of stuff to look forward to also. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Wait, this is your third trip, right? She did one in there. Yeah, one in the yes. old studio. Yeah. That was before we knew if we liked you or not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just like a little like, like a de- get to know it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. So tell us about now being a four-time national champion. It's crazy when people put it like that. Like it's actually like, is it me? Like, like it. Like, I don't believe it. Like, really, I do this because I enjoy it. I do it because I love competing. And like at the end, of course, I want to win. Um, and when that happens, it's just amazing. And like being able to represent UNC, represent Mexico, and just like now call myself a four-time national champion is just like crazy like in my wildest dreams would have imagined that like i would be winning four national titles was the i would this is as a narp over here (laughs) um, i would think the first journey to winning a title like you're pretty and i remember we've talked about yeah like i mean you're like motivated to do it and win it Mm -hmm. and i remember you talked about this about the whole olympic experience yep is the motivation different did you have to drive yourself differently after you've already done it once, to go do it again? It was different, but it was mostly on, like, the aspect of, like, adrenaline and pressure. I I thrive during a lot of pressure. I think that that's when I compete the best, like, when I'm super nervous, like, competitions are really close. And I this year, I, like, I've had a different process because we're preparing for the Olympics, so, like, I've had more international competitions, which is, like, just, a, like, another level of, like, nerves and pressure that you feel. So it was mostly on that side. Like, I had to change my mentality because, like, and I talked to to my psychology about this. I was like, am I wrong to, like, feel like I just, like, of course it's important and, of course, I care. But the the feelings are so different that it kind of feels like, oh, I'm going to make it. Like, I'm okay, you know? So, like, I kind of, like, relax myself Mm -hmm. too much of, like, I do have to do well, like, good dives, but it has to be. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. So, like, after ACC, is Gamboa and I, like, kind of, like, figured out that I have to, like, start putting myself, like, goals of, like, points. Like, oh, in three meter, we're going to do 350 points on the prelims and 370 points in the final. So, like, it's got to, like, it's it changed on that aspect of, like, putting little motivations during the competition because of, like, how I thrive during pressure. So, like, this compared to, like, world championships where, like, it was, like, the last chance to get the spot for the Olympics, the last chance to, like, make it to final and do a good job. And, like, if you don't, like, final, you don't go to the Olympics. Like, that amount of pressure, you don't feel it at ACCs or NCAAs. And, like, it's, like, I like I, there's nothing wrong with it, but, like, it's just so different that, like, I had to change my mentality a little about that. And, like, doesn't mean that any of them is, like, easier, but it's just... You know, it's just different. So I had to change my mentality on that aspect Mm -hmm. of, like, putting pressure and adrenaline. When did you – because I don't think it's not common for people to say, man, when things are the most stressful, that's (laughs) when I do my best. Yeah. When did you realize that was something that you were okay with and that you did perform well in a situation like that? I think – I don't remember the specific, like, competition, but I know it was during junior, so I was probably, like, 16, 17 – um and I remember like at competitions like people would ask me like oh like you seem so calm on the board like and like you competed so well and I was like I was so nervous so that kind of like that kind of like made me think of like oh I was really nervous like and I did well or like during other important competitions I would be like super like with a lot of anxiety a lot of nerves and everything and like I would just like okay like it's okay you've done it multiple times like usually in competitions like one of my phrases was like it's going to be fine during competitions. Like I could be landing on my stomach during practice, but I know during competition is going to be easy and I'm going to make it. So that like mentality, like 
changed and then like now it's just like oh during competition i feel so well so like when i feel that i'm like okay i got it so i just like i like i've been saying like if it, it those nerves and that adrenaline is going to be there no matter what, no matter what activity you're doing. They're going to be there if you care about them. It means that you care about what you're doing. You might as well embrace it. Like, if you're, like, scared of those feelings, you're never going to do well. So, like, you might as well just be like, okay, I'm nervous, but I'll, I'll do great. So, yeah. Did people treat you differently at this year's Nationals because you were – the defending champion like did you notice were people like there's aranza i don't think so i think <laughs> i think it was the same thing but i like also don't really pay attention of like to that aspect of like oh how are people seeing me this time but like of my roommates and like like because we were watching swimming the men swimming and uh have you guys heard of leon mark john like he's been like breaking every single record like every event that he swims so i was like telling him like oh my god like I would be so scared of competing against that guy. If he was like, like in the lane next to me, I'll be so scared. And they go like, people probably think that about you. And I'm like, <laughs> no, they don't. Like, no, it's, it's fine. But yeah, no, I don't think they've treated me differently. Like if anything, like it's being harder because it's like, oh, she's a national champion. We're like, let's see if she can still win, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, Did you add stuff to your repertoire this year that made you even better? I think the psychology part, I don't think, last year I wasn't going to sports psych when I like came uh, here with you guys and talk, um, but I remember mentioning like all the struggles that I had after the Olympics and everything, and um, I went to a competition in September um, to qualify for Pan American Games, and I catch myself putting that pressure of like, oh, they want me to win, like the people from like the Mexican committee are here, like they want me to win, they want me to go, they want me to be the one going to the Olympics. So I kind of like started putting that pressure on myself. I catch myself and I was like, no, it's okay. Just dive the way you can do it. And like, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and coming back, I was like, Alex, Alex is our trainer. I was like, Alex, where's the sports side contact? Cause like I need to start going. Um, so I think definitely that's something that I added and it's been helping me a lot. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. You were just doing like typing. Do you really type with just one finger? Like no. That? <laughs> My brother does. And I'm like, how long does it take you to like write essays? He literally types with one finger, with and I'm one like, finger I can't. at a time. We know yes. somebody. We know a person. I'm like, like I that can't. Too. No, no, no. I, I write with him. Whenever you're in here, I feel like you're you're always talking about the mental side of things as much or really more than the physical side. Yeah. Like I know it's physically hard to dive. I of feel course. as though that's true. But what's the balance there of what makes somebody really good? I think it's mostly. Like, you don't realize how much of an impact the mental health has until you go through something like I did or, like, a struggle where, like, you don't feel yourself competing, you don't feel yourself practicing. Like, and, like, before that happened to me, I was, like, oh, like, I feel great physically and, like, I, like, I, I'm diving well and, like, you know, like, I had that confidence. But then, like, as I started, like, missing some dives and, like, competing not, like, my best and everything, like, my mentality kind of, like, did, like, went down on that side. Um and yeah, like now I've realized that it's so, I think it's even more important to be good in a mental, like in a mental space, in a good mental space than physically. Because I feel like you are doing the practice, you're doing the, like the weight session, you're doing the dry land, the conditioning, everything. Like, so like the physical part is there, but like, if you're just not mentally ready, mentally prepared to like what it's coming or like really enjoying every moment or like being present on what you're doing like it's really really hard to compete at your best like and again like I didn't feel like that was a important part like I remember even when I heard Simone Biles talking about it like at the Olympics I was like yeah I can see why it's important but like is it that important and then like I went through all that whole process for like the post-Olympic depression and I was like oh wait like it's as important or even more than like the physical side Okay, where are we like on the Olympic journey? Like, t where where are we on the path right now? I'm qualified for okay. the Olympics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I can say it now. <laughs> so what? Uh, what is like? What are the next steps? I have to imagine that's where a lot of your focus is going to be going yes. now. So what? What are the things that have to happen now? So right now, I'm taking. Um, I took a day la last week off. What you took a day off? <laughs> 
Get out of here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> crazy. Like, I should be practicing already. Um, but no, that was something I learned. Like, you learn from your mistakes. You know, after Olympics, I did not take a break and look where it got me. So now I'm like, I need two weeks and then we'll see. Um, this week, I'm starting, like, weights and everything. And then next week, I start with diving again. Um, so I'm in that process of just practicing, like, it's gonna be a long summer. Just practice. Um, I think there's a competition in Italy at the end of June. Might be going to that one, and then there's Mexico wants to do a training camp in Barcelona uh, for July before the Olympics, and then go from there to the Olympics. So it's gonna be a, a fun summer, hopefully in Europe. Um, but yeah, that's like the process. There's not many other competitions. I like don't have to go to Olympic trials, which is super nice, and I can like focus 100% on the Olympics now. I mean, I understand, obviously, that everyone who's going to the Olympics is going to win. But what, what in your mind, is a successful trip? Is it the gold medal? Is it making it to a certain point of the competition? Like, what in your mind means, you know what, this was successful? Yeah. I think for big competitions like the Olympics, my mindset right now, it's make it to finals, like, do your best dives in prelims, semifinals, and then make it to finals. And after that, of course, I won the medal. So, like, once you're in the final, there's nothing to lose and, like, everything to win. So um, that's, like, the mentality I'm doing for, like, the big competitions is, like, step by step. Because I feel like if I go, like, ahead of myself, like, I want to win the medal, then, like, sure. it's, like, all that pressure and, like, it goes the wrong way. You're too nervous and everything. So, like, it just doesn't work out. Uh, but, yeah, for other competitions, for this one, for NCAAs, it was honestly like kind of the same mentality, just like do your dives, get to the final and like just do your best dives. Like that's pretty much like the mentality of going through like all competitions of like step by step, little by little. Because if you go there for like, I mean, I go there to win everything, but like if I, that's the only thing in my mind, like it's not going to help. So sometimes like putting the, the goal of like, oh, I want to make it to finals with so many points or like I want to make it to like finals in first place and stuff like those little goals those little like achievable things in that moment help me I'm just gonna tell you what Adam if you're sitting on your couch in like August or July or whatever and Aranz is up there diving for a medal I'm gonna be so nervous I will too <laughs> nervous right now. I, but she won't be nervous yeah. but I will I'll end up being nervous yeah that we'll is my take pledge. the nerves here back when you're Thank up there you. on the board just think Jones and Adam are nervous when we were they right. have the right. nerves it's okay <laughs> Yeah, we'll take that all off of you, and yeah. then you can yeah, handle all, like, be ours. Doing all of the other things. Yeah, yeah, of course. When you have a whole week with no diving, no weights. Yeah, what do you? What's do? life like? I'm not gonna lie. Well, I told you this already, but the NARP life goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> At least for a week, like literally, like I don't think I've ever had a week off, like more than a week off, completely off, in the past, like since I started diving. Like it really. I mean, I'm having two weeks off of diving, but not a physical activity because I started lifting this week. Um, but I honestly thought I was going to be, like, losing my mind because I wouldn't have, like, a schedule of, like, I have, like, classes and then I have to go to lift and then I have to go to practice and then I have to do homework. Like, that wasn't at all. Like, I was, like, going to classes. I was like, oh, I need to, like, start studying. And, like, I'll be like, no, but I have time. So, like, I would literally just, like, lay in bed and, like, sleep all afternoon and, like... Then Thursday, Friday, we didn't have classes. So, like, it was so nice. Like, actually, I woke up Thursday and I was like, I don't have practice. I don't have classes. I don't have anything to do. Because I wasn't that behind with my classes, which is so nice. Um, I was like, I, like, what do I do? I went to the pool. I, like, I read. I spent a lot of time with my roommates. We went, like, and hang out, uh, uh, like, to restaurants. Like, it was just, like, a whole thing where I was like, what am I supposed to do with this amount of time like on Sunday I was like what day of the week is I was like I've had like four days off like what is going on I've had four Sundays like when does that happen yeah. but it, it's, it was great yeah I do appreciate that you went to the pool you're like you know what just I, did, I don't want to be too far away from yeah the pool. I mean I lay at the pool I didn't <laughs> like I, I took the sun <laughs> I took the sun in okay is this new the one this up one? on the top of the ear no I've okay, had it. I just maybe it's just no. Like, I've I had like years. different. Yeah, I think it's a bright color, but no, I've had I've I've had it since 2018. So okay. Like Do we have any years. new tattoos, piercing, mm, anything, anything? I got this tattoo during the summer. Whoa, what is it? Uh, it's it's my state. Okay. Which one's the camera? Is that one the camera? Like this one? 
Yeah, yeah, um, that was got it. It's got it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one is my state. And then I got this other one, um, which is like my best friend's uh, like birth flower. Oh. And she got mine. Oh. Um, this is uh, Camila. She is in uh, Gators at UF right now. Um, we literally grew up together. She, my brother, and me were like literally like siblings. So like during the summer, I was uh, we went we were both home. She was about to go to uh, Florida, and like I was coming here. I was coming here with me, and um, I was like, we should get a tattoo. And she was like, sure. So like I like, and it was like her birthday present. Like we've been talking about this since like last year, but she was she just turned eighteen this year. Oh, well, 2023. Um, and I was like, it's going to be your team birthday, but, like, we're going. You pick up. Like, I was like, you can tell me whatever you want to get tattooed, and I'll do it. Like, wow. you, like I don't have to decide. You are the indecisive one. So she picked it, and we decided, like, she got my birth flower, and I got hers. What if Adam oh, and yeah. I got a tattoo of uh, what should I get? Should I get, like, a microphone or something? What if Adam, like, Adam and I got a tattoo? Hmm. I like the microphone, like a like yeah. a podcast microphone. Yeah, that's cute. You gotta be careful that it definitely looks like a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You you gotta go with a good tattoo artist. Yeah, I want to see an example. Yeah, of the the, let's the let's started. see the draft, and then we'll see if we get it in the body. Yeah. So yeah. we've never talked about what's growing up in La Paz like. It's it was fun. Um. There is not much to do in La Paz in terms of like going out and like stuff like or like at least it wasn't when also, I was there. Yeah, I was five, but I'm like talking like high school, like 16, 18, 17. Um, at least there wasn't like many places to go out when I was in high school. My brother had a complete different experience than me. Um, but it was nice. La Paz is like really calm. Um, there's no much to do. It's like a like pretty safe city. Like. There is not much traffic. It's it's a small city, so like it's really calm. We have beautiful beaches. Like there, like you can go to restaurants like on the side of the beach. Like you can just like spend the afternoon at the beach. Like it it just like really nice, honestly. And I I kind of took it for granted. I was like, I want to get out of here. Like you know, like small town kind of thing. Or like I just I need another like place and stuff. But because we also travel a lot, like. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it when we came back to La Paz. We were like, oh, like we missed this, you know. Um, but yeah, it was it was nice, pretty calm. Like all my family is there, so it was always like surrounded by people that I love and love me. So yeah, it was nice. Has it ever, like, I mean, you were just saying, oh, uh, with a competition in Italy that I might go. To. <laughs> I mean, do you ever sit back and go, wow? Like, I mean, diving has taken me oh yes. a lot of places and given me a lot of experience absolutely like all the time i really i'm so grateful and don't take it for granted there's places that i've been every place that i've been internationally like i would have never thought of being there and like not even just like competitions in other places but like even coming here to unc like if it wasn't for diving i wouldn't have made it to this school um so yeah like it has given me so many things and like when I go to other places, I'm like, like when I went to Qatar in February, I was like, what am I doing here? Like Qatar of all places, like, like it's just like so random. And yeah, it is, it is something that I don't take for granted and I'm so grateful, but I love just getting to new, new places, getting to new, new people. I like get excited when I'm like going to world championships and like I see people that are like in schools here that I see conference that I see at nationals and stuff and like just going there and be like, oh, I'm going to see this person. I'm going to see this person. So I, I love it, and, like, there's definitely a lot of places that I would have never thought I would be, like, visiting. Why do you think the match between you and Carolina is so good? Because, like, there's no there's no real reason why you're at mm-hmm. Carolina. Like, if Gamboa was at Missouri, you might be at Missouri. Yeah. Right now. But for some reason, you came here, and it just feels like like you you and Carolina were supposed to be together. Yeah. I don't know. I really like Carolina. I think Chapel Hill is a small town, so I think that has some relationship with how La Paz was because I didn't want to go to a big city with traffic and a lot of things going on, so I think that's one of the things. And I don't know, UNC has like that like drive to be the best of like we're winning national champions. We're like we're uh, having the best teams in the nation. We have this, so many programs that are for athletes, that are for student athletes. That are like, we have these connections. We have all of this. Like, I think like Carolina just like always pushes the school to be best. And I think that's something that I like really like with like people around me and like this school of like 
okay, you like you want to be the best, you 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 gotta like do this, you know. So I think that push of like the school always trying to be the best in the nation in like academics and athletics like really helped me with that mentality that I grew up with of like just like you gotta you wanna win, you gotta do all of this. So yeah. Do you, how far into a conversation with someone you don't know do you get before you say I'm a four time national champion and I'm going to the Olympics? Like do you make them Google it? No. I I, I never tell anyone that I like I I've been to Olympics and I've won national champion. That's like I never I don't think I've ever like gone to someone and be like hi like this and like we talked to for 20 minutes and I'm like oh yeah like I'm going to Olympics like sometimes it does come up but like it's mostly because my friends told them like oh but she's really cool because they're like oh do you do a sport and I'm like yeah I'm a diver and then my friends are there and like no but she is a four-time <laughs> national champion and she's won that many medals at ACC and she's a two-time Olympian and I'm like yeah <laughs> I'm like yeah that's me so like the, then the person I'm talking to they're like oh my god what didn't you say anything I'm like I don't know I just like don't go around introducing myself hi I went to Olympics you know um so sometimes I don't even say it unless my friends say or like they see my tattoos they see my rings or like they've like seen me around once they get like hear like oh I'm like I'm a diver they're like oh you're the really good diver and I'm like yeah <laughs> so yeah sometimes I don't say it sometimes I realize it and then I say it but I don't really go around saying I'm a, I won I don't want to think about a world when Aranza and Carolina <laughs> aren't together but I assume that world will exist at some point in the near yeah <laughs> in the near future what's no what are, I, I refuse to what, what hap like what happens in that world what happens when this journey is over well I want to stay here I want to keep practicing with Gamboa, and I want to keep diving professionally at least until 2028. So another Olympic cycle, which is our, our um, other four years. And I really want to keep practicing with Gamboa. So in a perfect world, I would graduate, get a job here, and stay here. <laughs> um, so I'll be around. Um, but yeah, I like I don't even want to think about like when I have to graduate and like if I like if that doesn't work that perfect world doesn't work like where am i gonna go what am i gonna do and stuff um but hopefully i'll i'll still be around yeah. i have the sinking feeling that i'm going to be replaced someone new who we like a little better. Yeah, that's easy <laughs> okay i meant to ask you this last time i know this isn't what you do but i saw this on tv and it mm -hmm. was crazy these people who dive off the cliffs uh cliff diving yeah, yeah, yeah. or high diving yeah would you ever do that? I've considered it. I feel like you would. That that seems really dangerous to me. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It is. That's why you like it. Yes. I like, okay, so one of the things, like, I love the adrenaline. So I feel like when I'm done diving, I need to find something that gives me that same rush. You know? so I like, guess that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's either going to be, like, I don't know, like cliff diving or skydiving or stuff that are so dangerous that like you're shaking because you're so nervous of doing it. Um, but I've considered doing uh, high diving, but I don't I don't know if I can do it. I feel like I could, but it's like just like the fact that it's 20 meter, which is like what, 66 feet, I think, or something like that. It's just like insanely like. This is a funny story. It's like besides the point, but we. I went to Ju in June. I went to Boston because the Red Bull World Series of high diving was. Uh, they had a stop there, and I have some friends in high diving. So I was like, oh my, like I'll go see and like take a like a weekend off from practice and everything. Um, so I went there, and because I have friends with them, they were able to, like m like, go with me to the twenty meter platform or to the twenty seven meter. And I've always heard people saying that when they step on the springboard or on the platform, they think that it's so narrow that they're going to fall off. Mm. And when I step on the springboard or the platform, I'm like, oh, I have so much space, you know, to move around and like nothing is going to happen. I went up to a 27 meter platform. I thought that was the tiniest, most narrow thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. I was like, I'm going to fall off. I'm literally just going to like turn around and fall. Um, so it was really funny, like seeing that comparison of right. like, cause like for me, it's like, Oh, three meter. Like it's like, you have so much space in between like the board and the water, like it's fine. And then I went up there and I was like, Oh my God, I got I died. Um, so yeah, that was like, just like a funny story of putting myself in that position of like people that don't usually do like high heights. Right. Um, but yeah, like I've, I've, 
consider being a high cliff diver, di- high diver, um, just because of that adrenaline. And I, I do platform, and, like, most of the dives that you do on the 20-meter platform are the same one as in 10-meter, but, like, to your feet. So, like, half a flip more or stuff like that. And I have good special awareness, so I feel like I could do it. But that's going to be a thing where I'm, like, 30, like, 20-something after I'm... Like after, done, old, right? <laughs> like after I'm done, like after I'm done with uh, normal diving, because 28, I'll be 26 for 2028. I'll be 26. And then if I push it to 2032, I've only been 30, which like in diving, like you can push it on springboard. You can push it to like 34, 35. Um, so I feel like I'll still be young. So I don't know when cliff diving is going to come around, but it's a possibility. So watch out <laughs> all right before we let you go and i know we already we talked some about this but like what is like immediately what are the where are you going next so i know you're practicing right now but what like what are the next couple landmarks of time before we see you on our tvs diving for mexico in the olympics what are the next couple of key things that competition in uh italy it's a grand prix so it's probably going to be in the tv too and then in July, it's just a training camp. Like, pretty much my summer, is, it kind of consists of training. Um, so there's no, sadly, there's no much that you can watch that I'll probably be there. Uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think you'll see me on the TV in the end of June and then at the Olympics. 